this is where you can find him three times a week here at his local Calgary gym working out. I usually do an hour on this. Now almost 90, Larry Kwong still likes to take care of himself, surrounded by other athletes, most of whom have no idea there's a game-changing hero in their midst, a man who made hockey history. Is this your father? That's my dad, and then that's our store there. It was in 1923 that Larry Kwong was born into a new Chinese immigrant family, store owners in Vernon, British Columbia. Fifteen of us were all born there. Wow. In Vernon. That's where we all lived. We lived upstairs on the second floor. Every chance Larry got, he played hockey and dreamed of someday making the NHL. Leaf Gardens in Toronto. He's right in, he shoots, he scores! Every Saturday night we would listen to the hockey game and that made me want him to play. That was your dream? Oh, that was a dream, yeah. Only five foot six and not 150 pounds, Larry was a natural, helping his first organized team, the Vernon Hydrophones, to a provincial championship. But often dreams of the NHL seemed exactly that. The Chinese in Canada could not even vote and there was discrimination, lots of it. If I want to get a, cut my hair, they won't take me because I'm Chinese. He was quickly learning that to be Chinese meant to somehow be never quite good enough. How did that make you feel? Well, not too good, actually. You know, I, did, I was afraid to tell my, my uh, family because if I did tell them that, the first thing they would say is that you're not going anymore, you know? And that means I, I couldn't play hockey or, or play sports with So you toughed it out? Yeah, I toughed it out. Just toughed it out, yeah. yeah. And the kid now known as the China Clipper was attracting attention. A top goal scorer, he jumped to the senior league in a place with the Trail Smoke Eaters. So this is the original? Original, yeah. Larry still has the jersey. His pay, a job in the local smelter, he never did get. We were all working for a job in those days. We weren't paid the, the money that they're getting now, you know. As it was, it, they wouldn't give me a job because of Chinese. You see. But he was unstoppable. During the war, he was drafted to play entertaining the troops. A scout who saw his talent said he was good enough for the big league, Madison Square Garden and a place with the New York Rangers farm team. He was on top of the world. The mayor of Chinatown, okay, New so, York. Right, and they sent a couple of good-looking girls to say yes, hello. Yes, they did, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then I made my home at the nightclub there. <laughs> I, I, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I met some beauties there, you know. End of the second, Montreal eight, New York two. The Rangers weren't having a good year. On March 13th, 1948, Larry Kwong was called up. The moment he dreamed of his entire life had arrived. It would be one of the highest and lowest points in his career. I was disappointed in it because when I made the, the Rangers, the whole country had had my name in the paper that I was playing in the, you know, the game, you know. And it turned out I didn't get much of a chance. His NHL career would last only a minute, one shift in the third period. Larry has never said it, but often wondered if the discrimination he had faced all his life followed him onto the ice that night. You wonder, you know, you wonder, yeah, but, uh, I mean, uh, when you talk to somebody, you, you more or less think that, he, you know, he can be against you, discrimination, or, but who knows? Instead, Larry went on to become a scoring star in the Quebec Senior League, winning the Canadian Championship. 
and moving to Europe where for over a decade he made a name for himself playing and helping to develop hockey clubs. His historic moment in the NHL as the first person of color to play, all but forgotten. People knew about it, some, but, you know, they make a joke of it, you know. They always say, oh, you only played a minute or so. And, uh, but anyway, I, I, sometime uh, I say, you didn't make it yourself. You it's know. a minute more than you played. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Today in his hometown of Vernon, you can find a downtown mural with a painting of his father. In the local museum, some memorabilia, even the sign from the family store. But very few people who really know anything about what Larry Kwong accomplished. Have you ever heard of Larry Kwong? No. No? no. Have you? No, I haven't. The two of us sort of try to keep track of that kind of stuff too, but no. no. So this is where he really started to make a name for himself. Yeah, that's right. This is the but Chad uh, soon remembers. So you first found out about him through, through your... Through my grandpa. Right. He who grew up in Vancouver's Chinatown. And so, you know, back in those days, in the, in the 30s and 40s, um, it was something new to see a Chinese... Larry was a big deal. He was a big deal. Chad admits to becoming a little obsessed with Larry's story. And a few years back, started a campaign to get him the recognition he deserves gathering every piece of info on Larry. Larry was second in goal scoring to Delavo that year. Teaching his kids at school, starting a letter writing campaign, even writing articles, posting videos online, and creating a new hockey card. When you look at Larry's story, it's the quintessential Canadian story. It's that, um, y you know, he helped to change the definition of Canadian. You know, and we were proud today to be a uh, um, an accepting nation and uh, yep. we you know we are we re realize that our strength is our diversity and it's yep. thanks to you know people like Larry laying down the tracks you know, yep. to, to get us here Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special presentation tonight. Chad was also instrumental in bringing Larry back home watch what happens when he recently made a center ice appearance one more time Growing up in Vernon, this youngest son was... at first few notice. Then he was a hero in Vernon and for thousands of Chinese, Canadians and Americans who had endured years of discrimination. But for Chad, it's not enough. The BC Sports Hall of Fame just formally recognized Larry. Now, he says, it's the Canadian Hockey Hall of Fame's turn. Is there any excuse? There isn't. I think it's just, uh, and the fact that he's not in, the, in the, uh, the Hockey Hall of Fame, there's no, you know, not even, I'm not talking about necessarily induction, but just, you know, have a display and showing some of the, you know, um, the, the, the pioneers of the game. Okay, we got you. Great. Yeah, I can hear you too. In 65 years, Larry Kwong has never heard another word from the New York Rangers. But he and Chad have become good friends, talking at least once a week. A few years back, Larry lost both legs to poor circulation. He says all the fuss now about his place in history helps keep his spirits up. He'll be 90 in June and is planning a big party. He says, who knows, maybe he'll set another record first former NHL player to reach 100. Keep smiling. <laughs> Red Sharon, CBC News, Calgary.